Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship with Morrisville Presbyterian Church. Welcome to those of you worshiping at home and those of you here in the pews. Welcome to those of you who are new here with us this morning, as well as those who are longtime members. It is a joy to worship with all of you this day. And if you are here in the sanctuary this morning, I will invite you to find a red friendship folder somewhere in your pew. I hope that you will fill out the information listed there and pass it alongside uh, folks that you are sitting around, as this is a great way for us to greet one another by name throughout the worship service. And if you are new here with us this morning, we use that information to follow up with you in the week and weeks to come. We also hope that you will join us today after worship in our fellowship hall for our Advent festival. We will put together some lovely crafts uh, that we will use throughout this Advent season as spiritual disciplines for families and all kinds of folks, um, and a light lunch will be provided. Please know that all are welcome, and we hope to see you there. Also, you will find uh, in your announcements there are many ways to participate in the life of this church, especially in Advent, including you will find a memorial and honorarium uh, information and form that you can fill out, as this is a great way for us to remember the lives of loved ones, as well as invest in the ministry of God's work in this place. This Advent season, we are on the lookout for the work and words of angels, the messengers who bring good news of great joy, who shepherd us throughout life, who bring us before our God. So let us join them, and let us worship God together. <laughs>
as printed as, as it is printed in your bulletin. Today we light the second candle of the Advent wreath. The first candle reminds us of the hope we have in Jesus Christ. The second candle is the candle of peace. Please stand in spirit or body and join together in singing hymn 82, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. hearts long for the one who is to come, who will bring forth peace, trusting in the Prince of Peace. Let us confess our sins using the prayer of confession as it is printed in your bulletin, followed by a time for silent confession. Eternal God, through long generations, you prepared a way for the coming of your Son, and by your Spirit, you still bring light to illumine our paths. Forgive us when we wander from the path of righteousness, peace, and purity. Have mercy upon us. Renew in us faith and hope that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts, to claim our love, and guide our lives. God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west, so too does God remove our transgressions from us. Trusting this truth, let us proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen.
our Lord Emmanuel has given us grace, love, and peace. And we have an opportunity to share that with one another. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with those we are sitting alongside. As we prepare our hearts for the hearing of God's word, let us pray. Ruler of all, both mighty and of the heart, help us hear your whisper and clanging cymbal, that by your grace and proclamation, we might have direction for this day and onward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Please join me in our responsive reading, and let us listen for the word of God. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me one who is to rule Israel whose origin is from of old, from ancient days, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I would now like to invite our young friends forward for a time for young disciples. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Anton. Come on up. We have tons of room. Good morning. Looks like we're waiting for June. There's a spot for her. Come on up. Well, hello there, young friends. It's so good to see you today. I'm wondering if you can help me, because last week... We talked about something. Well, I guess we talked about a couple of things. We talked about Advent wreath and candles. Last week, we lit one candle. Can you tell me how many candles we lit this week? How many? Two. Thank you so much, Isla. We lit two. You'll see up there those purple candles. We lit last week the candle of hope, and we thought about what were the hopes that we had for Advent and what are the hopes that maybe other people had for Advent? And what does God hope for in Advent? And the second candle reminds us of God's peace. As we wait for Jesus to come on Christmas as a child, the promise is that Jesus will bring us peace. Peace in our life, like maybe when you're sitting in quiet praying or doing something that you like, looking at a tree or doing something peaceful. Bringing, bringing pre peace for people in the congregation and for our loved ones and also for the world. There's many ways that we can experience peace. And I know at least every Sunday we have an opportunity to give peace to one another. Do you know when we do that? We just did it. I asked everybody if they could share a sign of peace with one another. And there's multiple ways that you can do it. You can shake somebody's hand. You can wave peace to them or just say hi. And you're asking them and hoping that they might know a little bit of Jesus' peace in their life. And they're hoping that you can know it in your life too. So I hope this week you can think of some people that might need some peace. And that you hope and pray that they will receive it. Do you think we could do that? Yes. Okay. Well, let us pray. Repeat after me. God, we thank you. For your, peace. for your peace. And we pray, and we pray that, we may share your peace that we may share your peace in the world. In the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, young friends. You can head back to Time for Music with Mr. Carpenter. I got a cross. Oh, that looks great. This morning we continue our journey to Bethlehem, called together as God's people. I want to thank you for remembering last week as we instigated just an inch of change that after my sermon, when I end, we move right into the hymn without me announcing it. I think Alex said we had about 70% of the people up and the rest were waiting for it to be announced. So let's do a little better. If you pay attention to the narratives of the birth of Christ, you note that they are quite different. We will be lingering with Luke, often called the beloved physician. Now the good thing about a good physician is that they pay attention to details. They see the things that others overlook, but they pay attention to every detail. And so we are grateful for Luke, who pays attention to the details. Listen as I read for you from Luke's Gospel, beginning at the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And this is the word of the Lord. Pray with me, please. Our gracious God, as we continue this journey, we thank you that you are beside us, that you guide us, and that you show us the way. And so we thank you for this chance to be in this holy place Again, our prayer is that you will quiet in us every voice but your own. Amen. I wonder how many of you have a favorite Christmas movie. There are a lot of them out there. I did some extensive research looking for some of the most popular Christmas movies. And by that, I mean I googled, tell me the most popular Christmas movies. Well, what appeared were the usual suspects. Certainly George Bailey and Bedford Falls and It's a Wonderful Life. Then there was Elf. And there was Kevin who was home alone. And then there was Ralphie, who we all worried would shoot his eye out with his BB gun in Christmas Story. There are others, but also near the top of the list was one that I enjoy every year. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, starring Chevy Chase as Clark Griswold. Now let me put in this disclaimer. The language gets a little salty at places, so you use your own discretion. But it's an interesting movie. You see, all Clark Griswold wanted was to have an old-fashioned, perfect Christmas. He just wanted to have the perfect Christmas. You know, something like that picture, Norman Rockwell, just perfect in every way. He goes about it interestingly. He puts 24,000 twinkling lights on the house. As you could imagine, eventually they continue to short out. He invites the relatives, and they arrive, and all they do is moan and complain the whole time. Then his uninvited cousin Eddie shows up in the ugliest RV in the world and parks it in the driveway. The cat chews through the Christmas light wire. And the bonus check, the Christmas bonus check that he got every year has yet to arrive, and it's Christmas Eve, and he is worried sick about how he's going to pay for everything without that Christmas bonus. Poor Clark. All he wanted was the perfect Christmas. Is that asking too much? Let me ask you, how perfect Is Christmas in your house? Are there ever any disagreements? Are there any disappointments? Are there any letdowns? Are there any frustrations? Is the tree always straight in the stand? Do any cookies burn? 
Do the children sometimes just drive you crazy? Do you have the perfect Christmas? Or is yours more like that of the Griswolds? Wanting perfection, but it turns out to be full of imperfection. And if you take time and read Luke's Gospel, you will see that the first Christmas narrative is full of imperfection. There's disappointment, worry, confusion, sleepless nights. It's all there right in the story, just as Luke tells it to us. The scriptures say that Mary found favor with God. A young maiden, pregnant, out of wedlock. Does that sound like favor? And then Joseph. He's asked to believe the whole story. The love of his life, Mary. He loves her so much that the scriptures say he will just quietly divorce her because he doesn't want to hurt her or embarrass her. But he hangs in there, doesn't he? And they go and they await the arrival of a child. For those of you who have children, do you remember what it was like when you were expecting your first child? It was an anxious time, but also a happy time, filled with lots of joyful expectations. And more than anything, you wanted to be close by your family. You wanted them to be near. But Mary, because of a senseless decree, had to travel and leave behind her own bedroom, her own mother, her own surrounding. It was difficult. It was her first child. I remember when our first child was born. It was a cold, wintry January day in Pittsburgh. My father made me promise that I would call him immediately when I left to take Corrine to the hospital. And I said, Dad, sure, but I mean, why do you need me to call you immediately? Why don't I call you once I'm there? He said, no, I'm going to be your backup. I said, Dad, do I need a backup? He said, well, it's freezing cold. And what if you have a flat tire on the way to the hospital? I'm the backup. I'll take Kareen right to the hospital. And I said, what about me? <laughs> he said, call AAA or a cab. <laughs> you want to be around the people who care for you the most. There's so much imperfection in this story. That's why it's so real to all of us. I think we all hope and long for that perfect Christmas, but it doesn't really ever come. Even though it's Christmas, everything gets accentuated. If you're having a hard time with a relative, it only makes it harder. Wasn't it the poet Alden who said, at Christmas every year, we try unsuccessfully to love all of our relatives. If you're worried about how you're going to pay your bills, if you're worried about what that lab report is going to say, if you toss and turn at night worried over that child that you love and raise, but you're worried, even though it's Christmas, it can be difficult 
and hard, and there can be tears, Christmas tears. Life and Christmas is always filled with some imperfection. I think part of our problem is we've cleaned up the story. We've ignored what's there. And it all looks so warm and sweet and beautiful. Now, that's the way Hallmark describes Christmas. It's not the description that we will find in Luke's gospel. I remember always seeing these Hallmark cards with Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem. You, you've seen them too. The sky was always blue and there were stars. Mary, beautiful smile on her face. Her clothes are color coordinated. Her hair is perfect. Probably had her nails done just before they left. I asked one of my associate pastors, who was a woman, about the story. And she said, I'll tell you what, Tom. By the time Mary arrived in Bethlehem, she had cramps in her legs, swollen ankles, and a pain in the small of her back. And when they get there, Apparently, Joseph did not Google hotline or anywhere. There was no hotel room. Now, I don't know how you would respond. Mary probably just smiled and said, oh, it's okay, sweetheart. <laughs> he said, well, I, I, I've done my best, and I found us a room at the back of the inn. There may be a few animals and some straw. Have you ever smelled wet straw or been around a wet animal and yet it is here that the Christ child is to be born the God who comes to us Emmanuel comes into this imperfect world and our imperfect lives with his perfect love, the gift of an infant who will be born that day in the city of Bethlehem. You know, there's a part of me that resonates with Clark Griswold. Clark went to extremes. I mean, 24,000 lights on your house, that's extreme. A writer in the New York Times said, Christmas is always about extremes. We go to extremes. But it seems to me that God went to extremes, who came down from heaven to be with us. That's how extreme one finds the love of Jesus Christ. So I don't know where you are in our journey to Bethlehem. If you're taking things to extreme, or if you're taking time to be still and revisit the story as told by Luke. John Buchanan, when he was preaching in Chicago, he said that Truly, Christmas is about gifts, but special gifts. They're the kind of gifts that you do not deserve, nor can you earn them, nor can you work hard for them. No, these Christmas gifts come from the heart of God. They come to tell us how much we are loved by God. It's a gift that says your life 
counts. It matters that you're here. It means that no matter whatever has happened in the past, God wants you to know he wishes you nothing but the best and wishes you well. Dan Dotley, in an article that was published, talks about the time he was driving a young 11-year-old boy by the name of Charlie into another state so that Charlie could visit his sister who was in a penitentiary for a crime that she had committed. Charlie lived with his grandmother in the city in a tiny apartment. Charlie's mother also lived in that same city. But she rarely ever had time for Charlie. Often when they would make appointments that she would welcome him for the weekend, something always came up and she backed out. Dan said that as they were driving home, Charlie didn't say a word, not a word, until they got right to the outskirts of the city. And then he said, could you drive me past my mother's apartment? Maybe if she sees me, she will want me to come in. Maybe if she sees me, she'll want me to come in. He said, you know, here's this little boy. He didn't want money for Christmas. He didn't want the newest brand of tennis shoes. He didn't want the fanciest technology for his computer. No, this little boy, who often felt ignored and overlooked and forgotten, just wanted to know what it would be like to be loved. The best gift that we can get, ever give a child, or anyone else for that matter, is love. And it seems to me that's what the Christmas story is all about. That in his extreme love, God came to us. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. It's God's way of saying to you, I love you, you matter to me, and I will always be with you. If we're looking for the perfect Christmas, we may be disappointed. But when we open our lives to the gift of Christ, it is the perfect gift, both now and forevermore. Amen.
having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us join our voices as one through the words of a brief statement of faith as it is printed in your bulletin. Together, let us state what we believe. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel, unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. Please be seated. With all of our desires and imperfections, we turn for the one who is extreme and meets us in love. So let us together pray together. God, O Holy One, who from your height meets us in our depth, we give you great thanks, for there are multiple days in December. We give you thanks for those moments when the hustle and bustle convenes in earnest, that you remind us that this is just the first week of the month and not the last. We give you thanks, O oh God, who works amongst time, that we have been graced with those moments in the midst of busyness, when we can remember what it is like to be a child in this season, with the anticipation building, the excitement looming for the coming of Christmas. And we give you thanks for the collective pull of your love that in its extremes meets all the needs of the world, where we are pulled towards generosity, towards meditative music, towards your silent and spoken splendor. For in this world that can be so dark and lonely and imperfect, we are in need of your light and community, O oh God. So Jesus Christ, the one who came in that manger, in that barn, Make your presence known to us this day and in this week. For those of us who have known hunger in body or soul, for those of us who have to stay out in the cold, may society prioritize the betterment of all instead of the security of the few. For those of us who have known pain visible and invisible, especially those like joy. May a road be paved to healing, whether we know the way or not. And for those of us who grieve and celebrate the life of loved ones who are no longer here in body, especially we lift up those who grieve Betsy, May the absence in our days find a way to expand and include the ache of the past, the thanksgiving of memories, and the promise of the future. Spirit of the living God, it is you who speaks through many messengers throughout time. We ask that you will sprinkle upon us your power of good news, 
May we raise our voices with eternal choirs. May we give and receive your glory through small acts of kindness. May we be willing to stand in the imperfections of our world so that we may meet your extremes of goodness, of justice, of love as we seek to follow you in the days and weeks ahead. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God will go to great lengths to remind us of God's love. In a world that feels imperfect and scarce, God bestows us grace and generosity and abundance. So let us reflect on how we may participate in that giving let us reflect on how God invites us to give of our time, our talents, and our offerings. Ushers, please come forward to collect our morning offering.
who saved the world through an imperfect yet holy family. We ask that you may bless these gifts and those gathered here, that we may participate in the family of your love and justice and peace for this world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn 158, Born in Night, Mary's Child. Go now into this beautiful world and go in peace and have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak and care for those who suffer. Love and serve the Lord and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and every moment of your precious life. Amen.